Welcome students, Tom Harmer here, your accounting professor, and this will be a demonstration of entering Wells Consulting Services transactions for a month in her accounting system. And her accounting system consists of columns for each account and rows for each transaction. So we're going to enter an entire month's business activity for Carolyn Wells. We're going to get some column totals, some summaries for each account in her accounting system. We'll take those summary numbers and create her financial statements. So let's start off with our first transaction. We'll see here, first of all, this is our accounting equation. Assets equals liabilities plus owner's equity. Owner's equity is broken down here into Carolyn Wells' capital account and also sub-accounts for owner's equity are revenue and expenses. Another is withdrawals but is not being used in this exercise. Our first transaction is the owner, Carolyn Wells, invests $100,000 in the business. When nothing else is stated, that is assumed to be cash. So that's going to be an increase in our cash account of $100,000. All right, now we have here in this accounting system, the column totals here for cash shows here $100,000. Now I've set up in this thing, we've got the total assets is being calculated right here. And here the total of liabilities plus owner equity accounts is being calculated here. This difference number is showing you if you're out of balance. This number should always be zero because when we enter a transaction in an accounting equation, it's a double entry accounting system, which means every transaction should balance. Okay, so I've got $100,000 of cash, but we're out of balance here. We need to put another opposing $100,000 over here in Carolyn Wells Capital. Okay, so when we enter the other half of the transaction, we end up with our equation being about in balance. 100,000 equals 100,000. So after every transaction, you should be checking to see whether you're in balance. Company buys equipment for $5,000 cash. Well, that's going to be a reduction in cash, right? That's minus 5,000. Okay, and we bought equipment, so that's going to be an increase in equipment. So you see, there you go. We are still in balance, and it's still a total assets of 100,000. We had there, it's called a change, a shift in assets. Company buys equipment for $6,000 on credit. That could have said on account also, but that's buys equipment on account that's not using cash. That's an increase in equipment of 6,000 come over here to liabilities. We've increased liabilities by 6,000. Boom. And so there we go. We are still in balance. The firm purchases supplies for $1,500 cash. Well, that's going to be a reduction of cash. And supplies is going to increase 1,500. So there you go. Firm makes a payment of $2,500 on account. When it says on account, it's talking about either accounts payable or accounts receivable. If we're paying on account, then we are paying down our accounts payable. So that's going to be that's going to be a reduction in cash of twenty five hundred dollars, twenty minus twenty five hundred, and a reduction in accounts payable of twenty five hundred. And we are still in balance. Next line. The firm makes a payment of eight thousand dollars of rent in advance. Payment of rent in advance is like making a, paying the last month's rent on your apartment. So that's an asset in the future, as future value. So we have here prepaid rent. That's increasing $8,000. Ah, but we paid it with cash. So that's a minus $8,000 here in cash account. Okay, and we're still in balance. Next transaction. Firm receives $36,000 in cash for services provided to clients. Okay, that's plus 36000 And that's going to be over here in our owner's equity account under revenues. So that's an increase in owner's equity of 36000 
And you see our equation is still in balance. Company performs services on account for $11,000, okay? So we perform services on account, that's got to be accounts receivable for $11,000. And that's going to be over here in revenue also. Okay, and our equation is still in balance. Collection of $6,000 from customers on account. So that's collection of $6,000. That's going to be an increase in cash. But it was from accounts receivable. So that's a minus $6,000 in the uh, accounts receivable account. So there you go. We're still in balance. So that collection of $6,000 from customers on account was not $6,000 of revenue. It was a reduction of accounts receivable. The firm pays $8,000 of salaries for the month. Minus $8,000. Minus $8,000. And that's an expense. We'll come down here in expenses of minus $8,000. And we're still in balance. The next transaction, the firm pays $650 in utilities expense. So that's reduction of cash, $650. And over here at $650 in expenses, utilities expense. Okay, and then our last transaction for the month is the firm records a withdrawal by the owner of $5,000. So we know it's a reduction of cash of 5000 And we know it's also coming out of Carolyn Wells Capital Account. It's not an expense. It is just a withdrawal. Okay, so that's minus 5000 As you can see, we are still in balance. So we have just entered all the transactions for the month. And we can see our ending balance in cash, our ending balance in receivables and supplies and prepaid rent and equipment our balance in accounts payable, capital account, total revenues, and expenses. And now we're ready to create our financial statement. So here's our challenge. To get our data into a financial statement format that users that don't know accounting can read and intuitively understand. So let's go over to our income statement and statement of retained earnings. Income statement here. We have a heading. Wells Consulting Services income statement for the month ending December 31st, 2013. That's a standard heading. Who, what, and when. Okay. We have here a revenue section. Fees income. Okay. Notice over here I've put the uh, income statement formula. For the income statement, the formula is revenues less expenses equals net income or loss and loss if expenses are greater than revenue. So therefore only revenue and expense accounts are included in the income statement. There's no asset accounts in here. There's no liability accounts. Just revenue and expenses per the formula. Okay so we come back here to our transaction page We've got fees income, that's our revenue, total of 47000 So we come back here. We've got a heading, revenue, and then indent, fees income, the name of the account, and then $47,000. Now this should be, by the way, uh, dollars. The first number in any column in a financial statement is in the dollars format. So therefore, when you're working in Excel, you're going to change from the uh, default, which is just numeric. So let's take a look here. We have our section here for expenses. We have our salaries expense. Okay, the salaries expense was from over here. We had $8,000. So I've got $8,000 here. Okay, and the utilities expense was $650. Okay, so that's 650. But we're going to come up here and we're going to change this uh, first number in the column to dollars. Boom, there we go. So there's our dollar sign. Okay, now we're going to get a total expenses. So I need to have a single underscore here, which is done 
in the thickened board, bottom border, that tells us that the number below it is going to be equal to the summary of the numbers above. We're going to move that over here. Now watch, I'll use our summation formula here, boom, that we learned in our Excel practice. Lift that over there, and boom, I've got my total expenses right there. Now the net income is the difference between revenue and total expenses, so I'm going to put a single underscore here, boom, and then my net income is going to equal 47,000 minus the 8650, and there is my net income. Now that needs to be also a dollar sign. Okay, so we've got that there. So we have the column, first numbers in a column. By the way, this is a subtotals column. This is a totals column, okay? And then when we hit the bottom line of a, re, of a financial statement, we have to do a double underscore. So here is the double underscore, okay? So that is a completed income statement. So now we start with our statement of owner's equity which shows the change in the owner's capital account during the same accounting period. So it is Wells Consulting, Statement of Owner's Equity, month ending December 31, 2013. So this is for a period of one month. So we have our beginning capital, the heading that goes here, Carolyn Wells, comma, capital, comma, December 1st, 2013. That is beginning capital. Comes over here in the right column. And that was zero because she opened this business with zero. And that's going to be zero dollars. Okay, our next line is going to be contributions. Additional investment by owner. $100,000 with the dollar sign. It's the first number in this column plus net income for the month, which comes from the income statement, 38350 right there, boom. And next we get a subtotal. So I'm coming here to do a single thicken or underscore to get a subtotal here. So I'll grab my sum thing there. Here's my subtotal and no comment next to that. And then we have less withdrawals. Withdrawals, we're going to go back and grab that here from our transaction sheet we had under the Wells Capital Account withdrawals of $5,000. Rather than being in a separate column, this first example is in reduction of Wells Capital. So there we go. So that's going to be 5000 going to be subtracted even though I put it in there as a positive number we know because it's a withdrawal it's a reduction our next column here is our increase in owner's equity and that comes over here to our totals column which is going to hit the equal sign we're taking the 38,350 minus the 5,000 equals. And we have a single underscore under that. And then we have Carolyn Wells Capital, December 31st, 2013. And I can use my sum number here again. It jumps right up, grabs that. And we're going to do our double underscore under that. Double underscore. And then we're going to do our dollar sign on that over here under numbers. Boom. There's our dollar sign with our double underscore. We've now completed our statement of owner's equity. We're ready to move on to our balance sheet. Okay, it's this third tab over. So here, let's start entering our headings and whatnot. So I've just typed those in and I'm going to center them here. Okay, right there is for centering, and then owner's equity, we'll center that. So those are our three headings we need in here, and now we're going to go get our cash accounts from our transaction summary sheets. So we've got cash, 
accounts receivable, supplies, prepaid rent, and equipment. And these are the ending balances. So that's going to be our assets, which total 136,850. So let's come back to our balance sheet and enter it in. So there we go. There's all of our asset accounts with their balances. So we got total assets. Let's come over, click on that, hit our sum key, enter. There it is with our dollar sign. Click. Oops, we need that column a little bit wider. Okay, there we go. And then a double underscore underneath it. Boom. There's our total assets. And under liabilities, we have accounts payable. Let's come back to our transactions. We got $3,500 balance in accounts payable. $3,500. Okay, but we need to come back, get that dollar sign on there. All right. Oh, let's see. I see that we got to get our double zeros. So let's do this. I'll click on this little upper corner here. It highlights the whole sheet. I'll click on the comma. That means that everything's going to have a comma in it. And I come back here and I'm going to enter the dollar sign. Dollar sign. Dollar sign. Boom. And then owner's equity I have here as... Carolyn Wells, comma, capital, tab, we come back here to our statement of owner's equity, 133350 okay, 133350 okay, then I'm going to enter my total here and see if my balance sheet's in balance, okay, I'm going to drag this up, grab all those numbers in the column, get my thick underscore there, boom, and get my double underscore here, there we go, get my dollar sign in there, got it, oops, needs to be a little bit wider, okay, and this is, oh, it doesn't have to be a capital, there we go, and look at that, we are in balance, so we're good, so all we got to have, now remember a balance sheet is a picture at a point in time, so this is um, December 31, 2013. Okay, and it converts it to a little bit different format. I can come up here to uh, formats and get a little bit closer format to what I want. So there you go. I've completed all three financial statements. The income statement, statement of owner's equity, and the balance sheet. And so we've completed the process in the proper format. And that is how you have to do the other project that you have in Chapter 1, entering transactions in the accounting equation format. The other exercises won't have the transactions adjacent here to the actual row, but you are required to bring those transactions into each row as they apply. So there you go. Best wishes and thank you very much.